Yo! Gentlemen and ladies and the good people, today we are launching 1v1. Toki, you want to tell them what 1v1 is? I mean, you are here. Well, obviously they've told me it's, a, it's like an interview with local players just to get to know them, know the experiences in football. And yeah, so I'm the first one, so I feel lucky. So like I mean, and subscribe. It's, it's a hot seat. So we're going to find out how lucky he actually is. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. Completely uncut. That's what it's about. We're going to have a one-on-one -on -one chat. Toki's going to tell us, or should I, I'm going to say the whole name, Toki. Zani, see, I'm so used to calling it Toki. <laughs> Toka Zani Sekot Klong. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. See, guys, also, I've been chirped, you know, pretty much grew up with the man and I still can't pronounce his name correctly. <laughs> eh? How's that? Okay, so Toki, tell me. We're going to talk, we're going to dive in. Yeah. This is very interesting for me. I've known you since we were playing like this, since you were the kid scoring goals from the halfway line. <laughs> how did your career evolve and like, how, how, how did it start? Well, obviously, like you said, we, we started off at a young age and you know, we, we used to have that when me and Mosa still played at Glen Region, we used to play against you guys yeah. in Tux, you know, yeah. still a really big thing then. And then, yeah, it, it grew from there, you know, I think Tux, Tux had a, you know, a good structure to, to help us a lot, you know, because where, where do you get uh, places, especially in Pretoria, like academies where you're training every day, six, mm -hmm. half past six in the morning. So obviously they prepared us well and I was, I was lucky enough to, to, to get the opportunity because I, I think started playing Vodacom at the age of 14, you know, which is at a pretty young age. And I uh, got the, what, NFD team coach was the soccer. Oh, yeah. When I was Good 17. Steve Docker. You want to give a little shout out to him? Hey, hey what's up, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Steve Docker promoted me to the first team when I was 17. And, yeah, so I think, you know, it's important to, to, to start at a young age. You know, we see now in the Euros and the world football that it's, it's how do I put it? Look at England, like yeah. all their players are so young. Yeah. And I think that's something in South Africa that we need to do. And I was lucky to get, you know, it's, it's rare that you get 17 year olds, 14 year olds, let's say playing, I was 14 playing Vodacom, yeah. I was 17 playing NFD already. So if, 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 you know, like if we could do that as a country, like across, so I was mm. just really, really lucky to get that opportunity. And that's how like my career started, you know, just breaking into the, to the professional level. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you had pure athleticism. And from my understanding, football wasn't the only option for you. So what made you choose that? Why did you go with the football route? I mean, I've got my reasons, obviously. We've been talking about football here today. Well, why did you do that? Well, um, my, my father was very big on football. And he gave me a ball from a very young age. And like me and him literally used to like train extras every weekend. You yeah. know? So I just fell in love with it because it's something that I was doing every day, every weekend. There were days where I'd be playing four games a day. I'd travel to, I'd be playing at Linwood from Linwood, go to Tux, play under 13, from under 13, then play with under 15, you know. So, yeah, so for the love of football, it's always been there when I was young. And I think my father's the one that really, really pushed me to it because he, he yeah. loved soccer. He played soccer. So, yeah. So, you know, I was fan too. Is that the only curse you have? Uh, the, it's not a curse, but <laughs> I, I, I think my, my father divorced Arsenal. He's, ah, he's a wise man. I think he's not you know, a wise man. good times. Times are changing. He's, you not a wise man. he's not loyal. We need to be loyal. I, th <laughs> I think football is about loyalty when it comes to support. Okay. Yeah. So, but overall, Arsenal, you're happy right now? I'm not but happy. You're loyal. I don't, I don't think anybody would be happy from Arsenal, where Arsenal come from and what Arsenal were. Yeah. You know, it's worlds apart. So, yeah. no, we'll get there. Okay. We'll get that. All right, that's from the Arsenal front. We had to just talk about that because Liverpool doing far better and I've waited a long time to say that to you. Exactly okay. my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Toki, but you said, you know, you, you did get thrust into the sort of senior level of football very, very early on. And the other day we had someone on called Shakes on Petty. He works for Betway and he, he follows a lot of youth. But he mentioned the, the famous Tux run in the, the Netbank Cup um, in 2008, 2009. I remember watching the game when you, got, you came off off the bench against Chiefs, and you had this incredible run. You were, I, I'm not, I think you landed up missing in the end, or, but it was an incredible run. The pace came on, it was frightening, and you guys did really well. What is, what is the best sort of highlight of that tournament? You, the, what do you remember? Well, it was obviously it was my first uh, big tournament in the PSL, and what I know is that the, the moments that I really, really loved is when we played Chiefs, obviously. Mm. That was like the first big one. You know, for a small team like us, it yeah. was kind of the start of the giant killers, kind of, in the, in, in the net bank. And we beat Chiefs, I think, 4-3. It, yeah. it was a great game, you know. 
And then, obviously, my biggest highlight of the tournament was in the semi-final because I think in extra time, I was the one that assisted for the goal that took us to the final. So I think that was, that was probably my biggest moment in that cup run. Okay. All yeah. right. That was fair enough. Yeah. When we're looking back, you've spoken about influence. Your dad was obviously very pivotal in terms of the career choice. Coming through the youth ranks and then we're looking at Tux and the players that you've played with and where you're at now, which players have had, or coaches, have had the most impact on your career? There's quite a few, you know, because I think when I started off with Lynn Regions, they, they instilled a culture in me, like, as you know, like, I, I, I think one of my best characteristics is that I work hard. I'm a hardworking player. Like you said, I'm, I, I'm, how can I put it? I'm very athletic, and I think they, they, they instill that into my play, because naturally I am, but they instilled yeah. it into the way I play. And then coming to Tux, I got probably two coaches. I'd say Steve Barker and what's his name? I forgot his name. Now. Couldn't have had that much uh, of an impact. You've got to remember his name. No, he did. <laughs> I just, Don, Donovan's father. Uh, what's his name? Geez. Moose, Mouse, Moose, Moose. What? I don't know. Let's just go with Moose. I'm trying to remember. We're going to have to... Donovan, you're going to be no, watching. This talk is going to send you the link and tell us your dad. Yeah, you, you know the, the, the rapper now. He raps now. Oh! Mark! McCracker! Yes! Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes McCracker yes. means he's, he's got no hair. Yeah, yes. Mark. Mark had influence. No, he definitely did because he was a character, you know? Yeah. And in he football, was hard, man. He was hard. He would kick, so he would train with us and he would kick the shit out of us being 14 years old. Yeah. Well, it yeah. builds you, you know? Yeah, At the end of, course, of the day, yeah. I, I feel football's like that. I feel yeah. I support that football. And the thing is that in, in football, you, like, he, he was very, how do I put it? He was very open, very crazy, you know? His character was joking. Yeah. Was, and at a young age, that's what you need. As, as hard as it is, you need that. Because in football, I feel like football sometimes is taken too seriously. Yeah. You, know? you need to relax, have fun, enjoy. And he instilled probably most of that part. And then with Steve Barker, he took me into the phase, like I said, into the professional. Uh, when I got to the professional level, he, he probably played the big role in my yeah. professional level because he took us every day, half past six. He's the one that obviously promoted me. And yeah. obviously in that time, that's, that's the most important time in your career to, to, you know, to, to build your base yeah. as a footballer. So obviously he obviously play, played a pivotal role because he's he's a very great coach, good trainer. I've always, I've always enjoyed. His so do you think you learned a lot more from him in terms of how to play the game as opposed to just the basics? Yeah. Definitely. Where as soon as Steve came into your career, that's kind of where he started thinking a little bit more about where to be on the field, what runs to make. That's yeah, definitely, it. definitely. Because, like I said, like he he, he built the base where as like we were training two three times a day. So obviously that's where you would be learning, like obviously how to make runs, how to etc etc how to uh, like read the game etc etc so yeah he 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 was pr probably played the most pivotal role in that yeah i find this interesting that we have you now here sitting as a 30 year you're coming on 30 now eh? yeah, 30. 30 as a man who's had a, a really good local career here in south africa and the first part of our conversation has all been development so it just shows you in terms of your sort of structure that you had a good structure to get where you are so, but like moving forward and discussing, so you move from Tux, you have that great net bank run. Apparently there were murmurs, Chiefs were then looking, looking at you and Platinum Stars at the time, I think it was, but you chose to stick with them and help them through promotion. And then, was it just one season and then you left and then the contract expired? What happened there? What is the story behind that? Well, <laughs> it's a funny story. My, my father, my father was asking me like after the season, like we got promoted because our top goal scorer that season. Yeah. And all oh, and whatever that there were talks that she wanted me and whatnot, whatnot. And then my father, I think, was it Machine, Machine Etuga was there. Yeah. You know, so he was at Golden Arrows at the moment, at that time, sorry. And then my father was like, "No, leave." You know, I was yeah. telling him, "No, leave. Go to Golden Arrows. You know, go leave." And I said to him, "Dad, like, I can't leave now. Like, I literally just a top okay. goal scorer. I want to stay at Tuts. It's our yeah. first time in the PSL. You know, I want to go." He's like, "No, leave. I just have a feeling that, you, like, I don't know. I don't." I don't trust these people. I don't think you'll get like enough game time. You won't play, etc., yeah. etc. And I said, no, let me stay. I, like I believe that they'll give me a chance, you know. And then, as time went by, I, I think I only I only played two games, the first season. Like I only still only played yeah. two games. And then when the season ended, um, I think three months three months before, because the two games one I played against Marisburg, like yeah. I think started. Let me say started two games. One was against Marisburg, and I think one against Platinum Stars. 
And then I played really well against my husband. So like three months before the season ended, Mirandope already called me and I'd yeah. already signed a pre-contract, you see. But then when I went to go meet them, then they told me, no, they won't be retaining me. And I said, no, it's okay. Because obviously I was already set. So I was like, no, okay, guys, it's all right. Because I already knew. So they actually I, said to you they weren't going to keep you. So yeah. Really? Yeah. But so, I wasn't going to stay anywhere. What? But, so I was wondering how they went out. Because it was like, financially, it doesn't make sense for the club to let your contract run down as a young up-and-coming player. Well, I, I what, just, but like, what went wrong from that perspective? I honestly don't know. I just think like foot, football, like youth or limiting youth players or football is run differently in mm. South Africa, you know, because I, I take it in Europe, it's, it's more of, it's business. Yeah. You know, strictly business. Like yeah. if they've developed you, if they've looked after you, if you're, if you're potential, they want to make something out of you, no matter what. You're not just going to leave or whatever. But in South Africa... I don't know how they work or what they think, but I feel like, like I've, I've always believed that South Africa don't take development as serious as we should. Yeah. Because, um, like for instance, what happened, you know, because I, I, I believe I had immense potential, but then, you know, they felt, you know, they don't really want to keep me and, you know, it's football. It's what yes. it is. Okay, so you moved on and it's Maritzburg next, right? Yeah, I went to Maritzburg. And then... Sad one. Yeah? Yeah. You say sad one. Yeah. Why was that sad? Well, it's, it's the start. So it sounds like no, it kicks like, off like, really well. Now you're telling me no, it gets like sad. My my career has been a roller coaster, like a yeah. huge, huge roller coaster. You know. Well, I'm I'm strapped in. Downs. I'm strapped in. People are listening. Let's hear. Like, tell us, take me on this journey with this roller coaster. Because now we now we're in a sad point. You said yeah, you've been released from being. It's not all good. And by the way, being like in the academy, seeing you guys play, like you're one of the players that we're all looking up to. We got one or two in the studio. There's a shout out there to Morsa. He's yeah. he's here. And we watched you, and it's interesting that we didn't know this part of the story. No, this is yeah. a lot. All right. Keep so, I uh, went to Marisburg, Mirandorf signed me. Uh, he's a great guy. I love him. Very, very, very sarcastic, but great coach. Very, very good coach. Uh, when I got there, because at that time, I think I was playing striker, right mid, and I got there, I was playing in the midfield. What is your midfield. preferred position, by the way? Anyway, in attack. Anyway, in the attack. Yeah. But then when you play as an attacker, like I've, you know me, like when I used to play at the back, I'd yeah. always try and score. It's like when you were playing, was the motivation really trying to score every time or did it matter as long as you were assisting? I think as you get older, it changes. Yeah. You know, like obviously back in the day, I feel like back in the day, scoring wasn't really the most important thing. You know, you're just playing and then literally just goals will come. Why did they put me at the back if that was your mentality playing up front? I don't understand that. Thing, <laughs> thing, the thing is that, like I said to you, like, I feel like football is there to enjoy. Yeah. Like, my, my mentality back then is just to enjoy. Like, yeah. you know, have fun, play, yeah. you know? And I think as you get older, well, me personally, as you get older, yeah. in a professional setup, goals are, as me as an attacker, goals, like, now it becomes the thing that you always think about. Yeah. So, so do you think maybe you overthink it then from that It could be, you yeah. know? Because I, I always tell people, like, you know, foot, football is football's not in your legs. You know, it's not there. Like, I, I honestly tell people, like, Football's ninety percent brains, ten percent talent. That's what it is. At the end of the day, if you look after your mind, like you'll go places, especially yeah. if you have talent. Yeah. So yeah, back to Marisburg. Got yes. to Marisburg. Things were going well. Coach was playing him in midfield. Then we played a friendly, and he's like, "You can play striker." I said, "Yes, coach. I'm a striker." Put me in striker. First game, I think I think I came off the bench on the third game yeah. of the season. Came on, scored a goal. I'm just finding it funny that the coach signed you and he goes, oh, wait, you can't play striker? Be like, yo, well, what did you think you were buying? Like, what kind of... As, as, like, as, you don't go to the shops and buy a pair of shoes thinking you're walking out with a t-shirt. I was also surprised, but then when I asked the assistant coach, it's just that he, he realized how relaxed I was on the ball. Yeah. And things that with Merendorf, what I've learned about him, like, he's like that. Like, he's, yeah. he's, very, he's very creative. Like, he'll do mm. things that you, you never think. You'll play three on the side and leave that side open, yeah. you know? So... He he looks at players' attributes, of like sees what he, that training says. Yeah. No, this guy can use. It. Yeah, he'll take a right back, put him up front, things like that. You see, yeah. so it made sense. But then once he saw me playing like full out striker, then yeah, then he put me striker. Then he asked me like, you know, I said no, I'm a striker. Like that's where I like to play. And then yeah, played striker, scored goals, did well. And then injuries. Then I started. And then I got a uh, was when a lot of football people tend to forget about yeah the, the injuries. Worst. Worst. I, th I think, I don't know if I got injured because the worst thing that happened when I was in Marisburg, I think Merendorf left when I was doing well. Mm. He had left the club and I think Larson came. And, is, is, it, is it Larson? Isn't it? Anyway, you guys came in. Yeah. yeah. He came, played a bit, played 
still doing well. And then Steve Compella came. What did you think about Steve Compella, by the way? Because I've, I've had my run-ins with him, in terms of, but I'm curious from your perspective. The thing is that, you know, man, every, every player has different... How, how do I play it? How do I say it? Mine and his relationship, it's, 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 I don't understand it. It's complex because you're not going to have relationships. relationship. Fair, I don't think many people know where, where you sit when you're talking to him. Honestly, so. like Character-wise, he's a great person. He's a lot of energy. He's going to pump energy into you. He's, he's going to make you run, for sure. He believes in running a lot. But yeah, like I, I don't understand the relationship we had. Like Because when he came, I think that's when he came. Yeah. Because we had three coaches that season. When he came, I was doing well as playing. Came um, mid-season break. We came back. And then, you know when you're regular, like, you know you're going to start, right? Yeah. So then, came back. And then, first training session, I was on the other side. I'm like, how? Oh, okay, what's going on? Yeah, you know? that, that one's a little breast, the ego. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I said, okay, whatever. You know, yeah. let's go. First game, they played 11 v 11. I probably scored four goals. I was on fire for about three, four months. But then... You know, when you go to a game and you know, like, okay, I'm not in the team, but, you know, the way I've been training, you know, I feel like I, yeah. I deserve to play. But then I didn't play, I think, for like, uh, until the end of the season, the last game. So then as time went, as time went by, because I was like performing really well at training, and then all of a sudden I could feel like my confidence dropping, yeah. dropping, dropping, dropping. And then after, I think after the seventh, eighth game, he calls uh, the... T- Kurt Lenkies and uh, John Pencil. He calls them to. He calls them. He says, "Come here." And he says, "How TK, how how was TK training when you came back?" And then uh, Kurt says, "No, no, he was training well. You know, he was giving us trouble, doing very well, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And then he asks John, "John, how's TK training now?" It's like, "No, no." Is TK a rapper name, by the way? No, no like, when your, the alias from the that's so this maybe guys album coming out soon. Eh? TK, we got to go on something. Eh? We're gonna do, do you remember some, be, line. just before we started? Remember, you're saying you know I call you TK. I said yeah. now now people call me TK because ever since yeah. I moved to Marysburg, like because there it's a lot of Zulu people, and then yeah. since then it's been TK. When I come okay. to Pretoria, I know I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> when I'm other like you cross the in, border, eh? the I'm name TK. changes. Okay, Definitely. all right, very nice. So yeah, he calls John. He says, "No, uh, TK is not training that well right now. He's not pushing, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And then I was just like, you know, okay, because I felt like you know, it's like six, seven games in, and I was doing so. You even saw that I was doing well, but you didn't even play me. So obviously, like I was just like, but how old are you at the time, you know? Because you're still fairly young. Yeah, I was 20, 22. 22. So this is maybe 22. where you're saying when we look at development and how South Africa doesn't foster. A great environment for young players. Maybe they're looking at you going, 22, you're still young. You can learn one or two things. I'm going to go with the tried and trusted because we know coaches in this country. Yeah. And they'd rather get the result than develop anyone at their expense. It's all about the result. Definitely. And, and I think I, just before, just before, just when, when Steve was there, I got an offer. This was the sad part when I said it was sad. I had an offer from Norway. I even had a contract. You know? yeah. They wanted to sign me. They said, okay, we're going to offer you guys this much. They said, no. We don't, we don't want them. Clubs are not. Yeah, clubs yeah. are not. And then they said, okay, we'll give you this much and then we'll give you a 20% selling on fee. They said no. And then I couldn't really do anything about it. Played a bit, got injured, season ended, then they released me. I don't even know what to say there, man. Yeah, this, is, you... this is football, but I feel like this is what people need to hear. Not true. Because man. this is, like I said, when, I, when we grow up, we know the, the talent that you had and the potential that you had. Not that, I'm not saying you haven't fulfilled anything by yeah. any means. I mean, you're sitting here as an accomplished. How many times have you won the Premier League? Yeah, it's like... No, it's like one with Sundowns. Yeah, so yeah. you've won. So, I mean, you're sitting here, you've done the things. Mm. And these sort of stories are people very much, even though you've made it, you're still struggling. Not true. So, what after that, what happens then? They release you. Now, you is your dad... A, my, is he the full-time agent here? Would you my dad, no, no, else? no, no, no. He was my agent. He was my agent at the time. I had another agent then. Yeah. Because my dad, I, I didn't, because I believe that, you know, football things, it's, obviously, you'd love to have family around, but then I feel like in football, you need to network, you need to know people, you need to yeah. know the business, you need to know the trade, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And I left uh, Maritzburg, didn't have a team for about six months, I think. Yeah. Couldn't get a team. Sitting at home. And then after that, I went to an NFD team because I was like, nah, I can't sit at home the whole year. Yeah. You know? Got to go do something. Then I went to Cape Town. 
I signed with the team there, uh, played for that six months. And then after that six months, the day I was supposed to travel back, uh, the guy who organized, organized me to come there, so the day before, he yeah. calls me, he says, hey, this, the, the chairman does the chairman says, no, you shouldn't come back. Dude. We're paying you too much and you, you didn't score enough goals. So I was like, what? I said, like, okay, no, that's fine. It's fine. I'm good. It's fine. Let's, let's terminate. So that's a fun chat. Yeah. So I said, okay, no, fine. Let's terminate. Yeah. Fine. I'm, I'm good with it because I, I, I believe that I don't want to go back to anything. You know? Yeah. So then I went to, then I got my, then that's when I got my friend to agent me. It was my friend. Then he took me to uh, Free State Stars. But did your friend have contacts before? Yeah. So you're saying you're networking. No, my, that, that, that's the guy who organized the deal for me to go to Norway. Okay. Yeah. All right. He was the one. And then I uh, went to Free State Stars, trained there a bit. You did all right at Free State Stars. No, that, I, had a, yeah. I had a great time at Free State Stars. But you were born in Bloemfontein, no? No, it's... Uh, it's what are you board. doing there? What are you doing in Bloemfontein for fun? Tell the people. No, it was football-wise. Football-wise was fun. It was but it's only, it's only two, two hours away, you know, so yeah. I come home with me off and stuff. But yeah, then I signed for Free State Stars, trained there a bit, then they signed me. And that's when, like, like my career started picking up again. Scored a lot of goals and then injury again. Then I got injured halfway, halfway into the season. Then I missed, I missed about a good half of that season. Then I came back, played a bit, and then, <laughs> funny enough, or uh, what's his name, Sly and the Semi. Hey, the people. You know they're still this. around, eh? No, no. You know they got Kelly's promoted, and now they still, and I think they've now they've left Kelly's by the way. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 now they're coaching two different, different sides, but okay, yeah, they're quality, yeah. Yeah, so they came there uh, to feast the stars. <laughs> That's a hell Mary, yeah. When you get yeah. a phone call from Sly and Semi, <laughs> so then I was just like, oh God. I yeah. don't know what to expect because of how things, you know, last time they told me, no, I should yeah. leave, whatever, whatever. So then I was just like, I, I don't know what to expect, you know. I don't know what's going to happen. I thought, okay, anyway, then I was there. While I was injured, I was traveling to Joburg. Traveling to Joburg. Uh, I was going to go do a scan to see, like, what's going on with my leg, etc., etc. Get a call from my agent. He calls me. He says, hey. These guys want to terminate. Apparently, you're uh, injury prone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm like, what? And then, like, I was literally, I was like, close to tears. Like, no way, my man. They want to release me now after doing so well, and like, I'm injured now. Like, where am I going to get a team? You know, that was my stress right then. I was like, yo. And that time, I'm going to do a scan so I can, you know, see what's going on. But also, this is what you dedicated your life to, now. Exactly. And you don't. Do you have a plan, uh, plan B at this at this point? I, I did. At the moment, I don't. I'm just looking, obviously, to invest and et cetera, et cetera. That's yeah. what I've been looking to do. Yeah. And I've been studying through Misa, but yeah. That's but at what this point, when you get in this phone call, injury prone, we want to release Oh, you're you. talking about in at that this point. time, yeah. At that time, no. This because I felt, I felt like at that point, you know, like, you know, I'm set here. Yeah. The yeah. they started doing so well. And yeah, you know, I felt like, cause I, I believe like in football, you need a, can I say a home? You need stability, you know? Yeah. So I thought, you know, I could be there a few years. So then after that, I was like, okay, well, okay, like what now? Like what's going to happen? And my agent called me and says, no, don't worry. It's fine. Don't worry. Let them terminate. It's fine. And I was like, no, I mean, are you sure? It's like, yes. And he spoke to me. He called my dad. They said, no, it's fine. Let's just terminate. It's fine. And I said, okay, okay, fine. Let's do it. All right. And then I went home. Yeah. I was home for about a few weeks. And then calls just started pouring in. And I got calls from him. Okay. Cape Town City. Yeah. But how did that happen? Because now you go home, you're sitting. Your mate who's the agent here yeah, doing the thing. Yeah. He's like, working. He's working. He's and, and, his, account, his, his and, and things that obviously people know each other. So you oh, get yeah. Uh, yeah. coaches calling me. Cape Town City called me. You know, they're calling me. And then now, now I was like, wow. You know, like, uh, I was like, thought I was down and out. And then yeah. I was getting four calls left, right and center. And then I was like, okay, I sat down. And then pizza calls. And then pizza call. Then I was like, okay, wow. And then the, the man, the man making all the waves at the moment. Yeah, he's been making the waves in local football for no, a long definitely. time. So he phones you. How does this phone call go? Also, did you weren't expecting it? No, not at all. Yeah. Not, not an image. That was the last call I was expecting. Yeah, you know, last last call I was expecting. Yeah. And then he calls me and he says, no. Um, so you didn't have his number saved, there, so this is a random number. Number. So I just answered. Okay. And I was, hello. No, it's Coach Pizza. So, oh, hello, coach. How are you doing? Yeah, but was he that soft on the phone? Because I don't believe that. No, he was. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. He was. He was. He's coach Pizza. No, is that how he did it? Very, very soft spoken. Okay. 
What? Seriously. Like, it's not very different to when he does the press conference. Isn't it? Obviously, man. Okay. Like, All right. So he's, he's, I'm with you. Hey, hey, talking, you know, how are you doing? Whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, we've been following you for a while, etc., yeah. etc. Et uh, I would, I'd like you to come to Sundowns. You know, I believe you could do what you were doing at Free State Stars. And then I told him, like, no, I got a, I got a lot of offers now at the moment. And because I, I wanted to go to Cape Town City. Because I felt like, you know, they are, you know, I'd, I'd do well. And then he's like, no, it's fine. You can go to Cape Town City. But uh, after you do it, I'll come fetch you at Cape Town City. And then obviously we spoke well, spoke for a while. And then he just said, no. And then I said, and then he gave me, because I was still injured, right? Mm. So he said, look, we can do this for you. Since you're still injured, come, train with us. And we'll give you the rehab, treatment, everything until you get better. You train at us, we see how you're doing, then, you know, steal the deal. And then I said, okay, fine, let's do that. Because for me, it's my childhood team. And in that moment, I believed, because uh, I really like if, if opportunities like that, you, sometimes you just need to take them. Because, you know, obviously a lot of people are like, aha, sundowns this, sundowns that. And I always say to people, like, everybody's story is different. You know, you never know. Somebody's going to come in, do well, somebody's going to come in and not. And yeah. you take that chance because you never know if you'll ever get it again. So I said, okay, let me go. And then I went there, got to the first training. But you knew one or two people when you arrived there. Uh, you had some friends playing there, didn't you? Let me see. Yeah, only, I think my bunda, Sugar. Okay. Because we used to play against them at, because uh, uh, I was playing for Acadia. Okay. We used to play against them at Acadia. So I think he was the one I knew. Okay. Sugar was the one I knew. So I got there. And yeah, so they told me the first session, you no, know, I went in, go see the doctor. I said, okay, doc. So he says, oh, so how long have you been injured? I told him, no, I've been injured for, I think I was about two months or a month. He says, you feel any pain now? And also, said, can we just take a step back here? Yeah. You go from this bottom of the bottom, being injured, guys releasing you, and somehow you've let, you signed for sundowns while being injured. Uh, someone's been kind to you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Shocked. Yeah. I was pretty shocked, you know, but then um, after, yeah. I, after I saw the doctor, he said, do you feel any pain? I said, no. He said, okay, go train. And I was like, what? Yeah. So no, go train. And then I trained and then I was fine. Good to go. Yeah, I was good to go. You know, I was surprised because I thought, you know, I still have to do rehab, do whatever, whatever. Yeah. Then, yeah, then my son on career started. Then I signed a contract. I was very happy. Uh, I think the shock was the, 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 the first game. The, the, the first game of the league. Because we get there now. They name the sheet. Hey, I'm in the squad. So I'm like, I'm shocked. What? I'm in the squad. Because things that sometimes play calf, right? So the yeah. preseason is pretty short. I think preseason was like two weeks when we started the league. So the name was in the squad. I was like, what? Okay, fine. We go to the pre-match meeting, sit down there. Now, I name the team sheet. I'm the man. I was just like sitting in the corner. Like I put my even head to the side, just sitting. And as the screen came up, I saw my name. Oh, my heart started beating so fast. First game for First your boyhood game. club. Right, I, my heart was Often not playing. You. <laughs> I, was, I was so shocked my heart was being so fast but like I didn't believe it like I was like what's going on yeah. like how am I starting because I believed I was just there yeah. you know just to know learn what's going on what's yeah. happening come on start the game didn't do too well didn't do too well at all because I think I got like three chances that I should have was scored. that because of nerves or was that just definitely definitely on another day and what was it like because you went from obviously Tux mm. obviously the other sides Maritzburg Free State and now you're getting fans week in, week out in the first game. And Pretoria fans, Mama Lodi fans, they're loud. Trust loud me. Fans. After that game, I, I, you know, social media, I saw what's going on. Oh, hey! <laughs> Did they go and find you there? Yeah, it's yeah? rough. It's rough. It was very rough. Yeah. So then I knew, like, no, nah, this is bad. No. So but how did you treat social media after that? Because now no, it's, it's a... I'm not big on social media. I don't yeah. really, you know. Yeah. I'm not really big on social media. Okay. But I do read through, go through things. But is that, but is that a deliberate that. choice from your side? Yeah. Or is that to avoid anything that could influence your game? It's, 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 it's got nothing to do with the game. I just personally don't like, like really interacting that much on social media. Okay. It's just a personal right. thing. So yeah, so after that game, because I probably should have scored a hat-trick, but I didn't. And then second game, I think I, did, I was on the bench. I was, no, I was, in, I was in the stands the second game, I think. Into the stands. Oh, into goodness. the stands. Third game... Straight into the starting lineup. And that's when I scored my first goal. I scored uh, against Celtic. Yeah. And then uh, the next game, then I scored my second goal against Amazulu. 
and then I think we played a Net Bank Cup game against Chipper, against mm. Chipper United, and then got a one on one, shot the ball, got him. I was out for two weeks, and you know at Sundown, I was out for two weeks, and you know, come a billiard came back from injury, right? and then it became very, very difficult, very, very difficult, because yeah. at that time, you know, Sundown's a big team, and they were doing very well. And for me, it's like I always say, like if you're in a team like that, as much as I, I played four games for two goals, as much as I felt like, you know, I deserve to play because of what I've done, and how I'm training, but um, the team was doing so well, like it's very hard to get back into that team. Yeah. You know? Very, very hard. So then I didn't I didn't get much game time. I didn't play for about actually the longest time I think and then I played in a cap game. And then after a year is it a year and a half. After a year and a half then I decided, you no, know, I got six months left on my contract. Let me uh go on loan, you know, see what can happen. And then I chose to go to Black Leopards. Went to Leopards, tried it out but But at this point that you made the decision is this after having conversations with Peter? Or is this something you've just decided and you've told the club? Yeah. Because what I find is throughout football is transparency isn't there. A lot of the time you play and you think, as a footballer, I've got to go and perform, I've got to train hard, and they're going to reward me. But a lot of the time that man-on-man, one-to-one, like we're having now that conversation going, Toki, listen, you're training really well, but unfortunately, in my mind, I don't think you're good enough. You're always going to be on the fringes. Was that conversation had with you ever? No. I think that's something that's really lacking in South African football, you know, because like I said to you, I believe that the mind is the most important thing, you know. Mm. And I believe that, as you put it, if, if if coaches could do that more often, you know, and because you're looking after, let's say, 20 whatever, sounds a big team, how many players, yeah. whatever players. It's half the and, PSL's most talented, yeah. And you're going to, obviously you're not going to keep everybody happy, mm. but I feel like if you have most of your people, like if you have a conversation like this, it's like you're at ease, you know, it yeah. puts you at ease, it puts your mind at ease, you know what you need to do, you know what's wrong, and you know where you stand. So I, I believe that, you know, mo- most coaches don't do that in South Africa, I don't know why, maybe preferences or coaches are different, personalities are different, people do things different ways. Personally, me, I think for players, that would be a better thing, like to understand where you stand, you know, as a player. Yeah. Because I think most, mostly in South Africa, it's, it's more of, players going to the coach and say, hey, coach, why am I not playing? Not yeah. the other way around. Like, wait, hey, let's sit down, let's talk. Yeah. Let's, you know, get the best out of you. Because I always be, cause I always say that I believe a coach, or coaches job is to get the best out of you, you know. Like what Klopp did at the, uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Because they were oh, pretty... what you have, yeah. Pretty, oh, I can't say average, but he had, a, he had a lot of potential and he brought it out, you know, yeah. as a coach. And I believe, like you know, that's 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 the way to go. As long as you look, like I said, after if you look after the players' mentality, you can get a lot out of it, a lot. But yeah, we okay. never really had that discussion. So you didn't have the discussion. No. Pizzo, Percy Tau, you played a bit of Percy Tau. Yes. In terms of both these characters, we see where Percy Tau now is currently struggling there at Brighton. What do you remember most about, like, how did he land up there, and how is he? Doing so well in terms of European football, what were the standout traits for him for Percy Tau? Uh, guy's got a big heart. Yeah. He's fearless. Like I first saw him when, like I said, I was at NFB. I think he was on loan from some rounds at Whitbanksburg. That's when I first saw him. Yeah. Played against Whitbanksburg. I was like, hey, who's this boy? Because yeah. he was doing other things there. And then that's obviously then we went back to Sundowns, then that's when I got to loan then when I went to Sundowns. I got to know him personally and like he's got a big heart man he's very humble like he's hard working he's but his biggest trait that he's got a big like he's fearless like you saw in the champions league my man against ramos against whoever pushing them turning and as small as he is like he's got a very big heart that i think that trait is one and he's very hard working because they'd be yeah. doing video sessions after games before games yeah. so they worked a lot on him they worked very hard with him yeah all right Togi. Now, some juicy bits, things that you can tell people that they don't know about you in terms of we're looking at the coaches that you played with. Who is the most standout coach for you? And then also, what would you tell 16-year-old Toki now sitting as a 30-year-old professional footballer playing at Chipper United? Uh, so we'll start with the coach. Yeah. Uh, before, like we, we spoke, yeah, I, I worked with uh, Rulani, Coach Rulani, for yeah. a very short bit, man. I call him a bit of the philosopher. I don't know. That's, that's yes. how he carries himself. Though. He is. He is. You know, 
And you obviously, you know how fans are, or social media is, a lot of critics, this, that. But then I, I believe like as much as I didn't, I, as much as I didn't work, uh, how can I put it? I didn't work long with him, but the way we spoke now about getting to know the player and just the way he presents his work, like it's so professional to, to a level like, and sometimes like here, yeah, like we would go to training, you don't really feel like a professional because things are not really run like smoothly, smoothly, smoothly. Yeah. but he's like on a level. And this is at Sundance. No, no, Sundance. Uh, no, no, Sundance, Sundance was professional, okay. Right. Sundance is the okay. my okay. other part. Okay. But then, yeah, uh, at that thing with uh, Rulani, like, like from s smallest of details, my man, like just the setup was s different. The training sessions, different talks, video call you, you talk, you sit down, mm -hmm. tells you, write down what, what do you think your strengths are? What do you think your weaknesses are? What do we need to work on? Take out stats. This is what you're doing well. This is not what you're doing well. Okay. We're going to set out uh, sessions for you to work on this, 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 this. Like, it's it's different, you know? Like, you could see where his mind's at, you know? Like, and I'd So, be... this is where the transparency between him and other coaches is far greater. Yeah. Um, showing definitely. what he wants to do with you. Yeah. Like, he, the, I've never really done that with any other coach. Obviously, you'll talk to coaches now once you do. But for him, it's, it's detailed. You get know what I'm saying? Like, I had videos. I had to sit down, showing me videos. Check this, check that. Do whatever and I, I worked like a short time with him and the other coach i'd say is uh who can i say i probably probably mirindop because mirindop was a very good coach i learned a lot from him he was very funny very very you funny. only pick one so true you've you already picked the one stop trying I, to be I nice two. i picked two okay but Rulani, okay i'll put Rulani number one okay number one okay and then the young player what do you tell young toki young tk i tell young toki that um like, be fearless, man. Like, understand that, you know, football Football needs to be played with all your heart. Never take things for granted, number one. Um, know that anything is possible at any time. And, uh, like, just be... Because I think right now, when I look back, what I would have done differently is the attitude I had <clears throat> when going into my depths, like, Losing my confidence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. is to understand that you know football does happen. Just look after your mind. You know, work more on your mind. Do other things to 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 prepare your mind. Work. Go to, to a psychologist. Go to speak to somebody like get a mentor. Or yeah, like for me, that's like the most important thing. Or when I look back, that's something I would have done differently because I believe at sundowns, if I had a different mentality, I would have stayed there. You know, I would have got more game time. But because, like they say, mental strength is anything. You know, I could have said, no, maybe I wasn't mentally strong enough. You know, maybe I just didn't, I gave up too easily. You know, my thing was that don't give up too easily. Don't push, man. Like, anything is possible. I feel like I could have pushed much more harder. I feel like your career is testament to that, by the way. Yeah. Based on what I've heard so far. Mm. Okay, but your best moment. The best moment so far. And then to, to wrap up, where next for talking? So your best moment in your career, and then where where are you going after this? This moment. Yeah. Oh, God, man. oh you got to choose one. We're here to make the hard decisions, and that's why I'm here to help you get there. So you've got a lot. It has to be. It, it, it probably has to be my first goal for Sundown. Okay. Yeah, scoring a goal for my childhood uh, team definitely one of my proudest. You remember moments. your celebration? What was it? What are you doing the salsa there? Oh, you doing the the samba? Eh? <laughs> some, just... Hey, there we go. There we go. Looking that was good. My yeah. Celebration. Yeah. Yeah. And how many have you done afterwards? Have you kept that going? Is that a no? It's from yeah. It's, it's a tra tradition, but game time has been my problem, man. That's been my since after Sundowns. Like it's getting game time has been tough. Really, really tough. Right. But it's football. Yeah. So then let's talk about that then. What what now? So you at Chipper? I'm at Chipper right now. I, I got injured. And then now... It was like, you, you should have a lot of the physio guys on speed dial, eh? No, no that's, that's the thing, like... I, Don't worry, I, I'm going to lost myself. That's why I'm... The thing is that I always, I always get injured at the wrong times. Yeah. I don't mind getting injured, you know? Yeah. 
But I get injured at the wrong times. But I got injured because now it was playoffs. I got injured, so I came home. Yeah. And I think they drew today, so I don't know what's going to happen with the real AM. But I think we'll be safe. Then, yeah, then still got a year on my contract. And then we'll see it on there. You know, go back to the chipper. See what okay. happens. Then I just want to ask, like, post-football. So we're looking at Ronaldo. How modern football's changed? Normally, we know 30s is normally the end of a career. These guys are going into their 30, late 30s now. Do you want to try and do something like that? Or do you have other plans after football? I do want to try and do that, you know, because I played with Kurt Lenkis. He's 36. Okay. And I've learned so much from him because I played with Matt Maritzburg. Sorry. And now he's practically one of my best friends in PE. So I've learned so much from him. And yeah, he's really motivated me to like, you know, to keep pushing until you can. Because I feel like he can still go on for another three, four, five years and he's 36. So yeah, I want to go the, all the way. Awesome. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I don't know we're going to do the album, but guys, this is 1v1. Do you, you want to, again, say subscribe to 1v1? Yeah. Subscribe, guys. Subscribe. 1v1. 1v1. Thank me. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me here. Oh, no. Thank you.